Okay, I'm back on this job today. So far here, I have put in the driveway, did the underground electric service, cleared cleared the whole site, burnt a brush pile. And here, now, today, we are doing starting the foundation. So the plan is to put the house probably right about here. Um, so we're going to be marking that out. I got... Here's all the tools, a couple tape measures, string, paint, markers. And I'm going to be meeting with the homeowner and deciding exactly where the house is going to be. But they kind of have it. There's a site plan here that an engineer did. They're kind of showing it right about here. I, I think the well is going to go uphill, uphill, you know, closer to the street. The, ele the electric is, you know, right there. So that's nice and easy. And the... Uh, and the septic they have set up down here and there's plenty of room for the primary and the reserve field. Alright, so let's get started. so I'm all I'm all ready to dig here now this is marked out these marks represent the size of the house but four feet bigger on each side that way there'll be room for the the forms and I got my elevation set this green marker here that that mark on it that represents the height of the finished walls so the mason told me to dig nine foot down from that mark inside this entire box here all right so i'll probably get to get started i may dig most of this with the track loader because it's kind of like a walkout basement this grease i just got this you know earlier this year this thing is pretty cool this saves a lot of time i'll, I'll put a link in the description where to get this
So yesterday I, I dug out this and um, I didn't use a level or anything. I was just digging to get you know most of the material out. So today I'm gonna set up with the transit and this mark here, I'm supposed to dig that entire square nine feet lower than this mark. right there so now I just got to do a little bit of math so we are supposed to be 108 inches lower than this mark right now the laser is 21 inches lower than the mark so we'll do 108 minus 21 87 inches so we need to set the laser we need to set this thing 87 inches from the ground and that's gonna be our height all right so I just um I just we just changed it to eight so uh so this probably has to come down another foot i know this looks pretty low right here all right so this whole area needs to be down probably at least a foot and a half this corner right here It got dark out last night and I was digging too deep, but this is about right. Look at that, that's... All right, right there. This is the elevation. I gotta dig this elevation everywhere. All right, so the next step here will be to dig some footings on this side and then the footing and the foundation can be done. This is almost ready for the mason to come in and form the walls for the basement. I just have to do a little more digging right here where these silver tarps are. This wall is supposed to be about on grade with outside, so that needs a deeper footing, like a frost wall. So I just have to dig that.
Now at this point, I'm pretty much just handing this over to the mason. I'll probably have to do a little bit more. I'll come here the first day he's here just to make sure he's good with everything. So I just came here today to drop off a load of pipe. I have everything here that I need for the footing drains, the septic system, the pipe to the well, the pipe to the electric, and the gutter drains. So the mason worked today. He Today he stripped these concrete forms. So that footing looks nice. And he put these forms in place for this frost wall. So I think he's pouring that tomorrow and I should be able to come here tomorrow and hopefully do the footing drains and do some backfilling. All right, so the power company just brought the transformer and the meter here. So now we have electric on this site. So I am back here today to do some backfilling and install the footing drains. The mason just finished doing the footings. And he finished doing this frost wall here. So I need to get the pretty much that two inch or that three quarter inch gravel there needs to be around the whole edge of this thing. And and I got all my pipes over there too for the footing drains.
All right, I just finished laying these pipes in. So I have, I have it highest in this corner here, and then it slowly or gradually pitches down, and I have it draining out in that far corner right there. Now it's really easy to see where a level is on this because the whole footing, that's level. So in that corner, I'm just, I, so in that corner there, I just started over the footing, higher than the footing. And then I gradually put the pipe deeper and deeper until at this point it is just below it. And the floor is going to be poured six inches deeper or higher than the height of the footing. So that means the footing drain will be lower than the floor in every spot. So that should work out perfect. So the next step is to cover this entire pipe with gravel and then put down filter fabric. And then the gravel can be brought into the center of the foundation and the walls can be poured. And then at that point, I can backfill. And then the wall and backfill and then the gutter drains will go in. And one mistake I've seen made a few too many times is that people will take their gutter drains and kind of install them at this point and I've even seen them th the mistake is that they'll tie the gutter drains right into these footing drains which is bad because that introduces a ton of unnecessary water into the ground around your footing so the gutter drain needs to be a separate pipe and that should be a solid pipe that's not perforated it's that time of the year where machines start freezing to the ground I had an issue with this this morning it was, it was frozen so putting them up on logs really makes a big difference Tracks are frozen solid. Will not move. Alright, I'm trying to thaw out the skid steer here. This thing's frozen like a rock.
All right, I'll see how this does today, if it's frozen or not. I cleaned this area out really well before I, you know, before I, when I parked it last time. So I think it should be all right. The motor just stalled. It's too, it's too cold. The, uh, even this primer to prime up the fuel, it's frozen like a rock. Try to thaw this thing out, but I don't know. This thing, it still has summertime fuel in it. I think that's part of the problem. So I'll add some kerosene to it to uh, hopefully thaw out the fuel. All right, so this thing, it's, it'll start, but it won't stay running. The issue here, you can see this primer bulb is like squeezed flat, so that, that's not gonna work. So I gotta open up the cab and clean off the intake screen. It may have some gelled up fuel on it. It may be dirty or, or a combination of both. The intake for the fuel is, I think it's one of these two. Hey, look at that, it's got ice on it. All right, so here's the pickup for the fuel see the frozen fuel on the end of that so I got to burn this off All right, I can pull air through this filter now, so it should be all right. All right, now you can see the primer bulb here. It's it's inflated now, so and when you go to squeeze it, it blows back up. All right, this thing should run now.
All right, so the whole reason this happened, the, um, the, 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 the place who brought us this gravel, they were not willing to drive down that hill. So they, it ended up getting dumped up here. And yesterday, you know, we were bringing it down with the skid steer and, and with that tractor, but it was just, that was too slow. So today uh, I, got, I got this guy here at this dump trailer. So we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes. Let's see what happens here. He's about to try driving down this. Hey, he looks fine. I don't think he's having any issues. I didn't load it that heavy, but I'll load the next one more. The other ice issue I was having is this was building up in here and it, and you can't curl the bucket up all the way because it's it hits. Let me try to chisel some of this out of here. That's nice. That's how you do it. Now I'm at the point where I'm handing this job back over to the mason. He is going to, the next thing he's got to do is pour these walls. So he'll pour them and then I think they can start framing. And this floor, um, we need a little more gravel in that corner, but that's not a big deal. We could always bring it in later, even once the framing has been started, because he's not planning on pouring this floor until the framing is on. So. It's not a big deal if a little bit of snow got buried because we'll be able to get some heat in here for a week or two and melt it out. 